Okay, so when you alter serve, you are also representing everybody here. Okay, so you are representing the whole community serving at the altar. Does anybody know why you wear the white robe, the alb, when you altar serve? Why does an altar server wear that? The alb is a reminder of your baptism garment. So the long white robe that you would have been dressed in when you were baptized, that's what the alb is. It's your baptism garment. So you'll notice you don't just wear that. I wear it, and Deacon Doug wears it too. And really, everybody that comes to Mass, we could all wear it because that's our rightful vestment as a Christian. So that's why you wear that white robe at Mass, a reminder of your baptism garment. Because if you weren't baptized, you wouldn't be able to serve at the Mass. Okay? Now, because you are there representing everybody, in a lot of ways, you're showing the grown-ups how to behave and pray at Mass. So the two things to kind of think about when you're getting ready on the day that you're altar-serving is the alb is a little bit see-through, okay? So when you pick the shirt that you're going to wear, try not to wear a shirt that says Gap, like Kiana's sweater, because when you put the alb on, Gap is going to shine right through that alb and everybody's going to see underneath. So just think about the clothes that you're going to wear up top because it will show through the alb. And then the other thing that people see is your feet, okay? So the shoes that you wear when you altar serve should be the nicest shoes that you have, okay? So the nicest shoes that you have to serve at Mass. Anything that is open on the feet, so like sandals or anything like that, not good for altar serving. It just It's hard enough to walk in the robe already as part of it, and sandals aren't very dressy. I don't say you have to have black shoes, but that's, that's the preference, black shoes, because black shoes just kind of blend in. But if you don't have black shoes, you don't have to go out and buy black shoes just to serve at Mass. Just whatever your nicest shoes are, okay? In a way, that's part of your way of preparing to serve at Mass already before you even get to the church on the days that you alter serve, okay? Then when you get to the church, you come straight to the vestry at the back, and that's where you'll find the albs, and we can go there for all of you new altar servers. We can go back there before you leave, and we can, you can try on an alb before you go if you would like, if we have time. And then you're back there waiting and ready for Mass. Okay? Those that are candle bearers, about 10 minutes before Mass starts, you're going to light the candles that are in the vestry, and one of you is going to come and light the altar candles at the altar. Okay? And then when we're ready to start Mass, then all the altar servers come at the back in the center, ready to process in. So, okay? so, what we have at the front here is what the role is called a thurifer. So the one who carries the thurible, which is the thing that swings the incense. So we don't have a thurifer at every Mass, we just have them at some Masses, but it's good for you to see everything that can be done. Then we have our cross bearer, and we have two candle bearers, okay? So the candle bearers stand half a step behind the, the cross bearer, okay? But you stay in a row all the time. And then what af comes after are the readers, and then the deacon with the book of the Gospels, and then the priest, okay? So when you walk in, so you can slowly start walking in, Carl, you can lead the way. So you start walking when they start singing. So they're going to start playing music, but wait till they sing to start walking in. Okay? If you are holding something when you're altar serving, you don't bow or genuflect. Okay? So, Carl, you're going to walk straight up and stand by the side of the altar. Then these three, as you turn, here's the tricky part. And we're going to try to do better at this, those that have been altar serving before, is you want to keep that line, okay? 
So that means when you turn, the person on the inside walks a little bit slower so that you can hold that line all the way through. And then Haley will lead the way going into, I just call it the alcove, that little nook over there. Okay, and there's a stand for the cross and for the candles in there. Okay, and the readers come forward to here. If the readers are able to genuflect, they'll genuflect here. If not, together they will make a profound bow to the altar, and then they just break off and go to their seats. So there's no need for them to walk off to the side to make their bow. The readers make their bow right in front and then keep moving. So you can bow, and then you can make your way back to your seat. Okay? And then the deacon comes in with the book, and he's going to go around to the back side of the back side of the altar. Readers, if the deacon is not at mass, it's the reader's responsibility to carry in the book of the gospels. And then the book of the gospels and the reader, you go in a single file instead of side by side, if one of you is carrying the book of the gospels. And again, this is a slight change from what we've been doing, the book of the gospels going on the back side of the altar then I will come forward and I will do my genuflection here. Come to the back of the altar. Me and Deacon Doug will come and reverence the altar. And then at masses where there, are in, there is incense, Carl will come in and he will hand Deacon Doug the boat, is what we call the little vessel with the incense. And then he'll slide up the ring, pull on the chain, and then hoist it up to, so if you pinch, pinch right there, pinch here like that, and then just hold this like that, and pull it up just so it's at arm height for me. So then I'll add some incense, put it back, I'll bless it, and then Carl will set it down, slide the chain down, slide the ring down, and then he'll take the boat back from Deacon Doug and hand the thurible to Deacon Doug, and then Deacon Doug will hand it to me, and then we incense the altar. Okay, so we'll go around. Carl, if you just take half a step back and you're waiting for us to come back. Okay, all the way around. We bow at the cross, incense the cross. And then we keep going around the altar. The choir is singing the whole time. Okay, when we're done, I hand it back to Deacon Doug, who hands it to Carl. And then Carl walks off the side and the stand for the incense is just in that little alcove. And then Deacon Doug and I will go to our chairs. The altar servers that went over there, the two candle bearers place their candles and then they come and sit in the two chairs over here on this side. The cross bearer, walks all the way through behind in the sacristy coming over here to meet the the thurifer okay so for for new altar servers the the job of the cross bearer and the thurifer those are jobs that you'll grow into the job that you'll start with so the job to pay attention the most to start with is the candle bearers that's the job that you'll start with okay so then once that's all done, the opening hymn is done, do the sign of the cross, the Lord be with you, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, the Gloria, and after the Gloria, then I say, let us pray. And that's where the cross bearer brings the book to Deacon Doug, if he's here, if Deacon Doug isn't here, you just come straight to me. Deacon Doug will open it, and then come and stand actually straight in front of me. It's okay if you're taller than me and hiding me. It's not about seeing me. It's about me saying the prayer. Okay? Now, Haley's going to give a really good example of how you hold it. So we're going to close it again for a second. When you bring it up, see your fingers just kind of holding underneath the book with the ribbon showing so that Deacon Doug can grab the ribbon. And you'll see as Deacon Doug grabs the ribbon, Haley slides her fingers back so that when he opens it, she can curl her fingers around the pages and hold the pages with her fingers and then rest the book on top of her chest here. So when she does that, she holds the book nice and straight 
and yet it's easy for her with her locked elbows and the book resting against her chest to hold it for as long as I need it, okay? And so then when I say, one God forever and ever, amen, close the book, go to the side, and then that's when we all sit, okay? So now we've got a little bit of a break. We've got a reading break, okay? So we have our first reading, then we have our psalm, and then we have our second reading, and it's at the end of the second reading that the two candle bearers go to work again, okay? So as soon as the second reader is done, the two candle bearers go to the alcove to get their candles, okay? And then when you get out, take a look to see where Deacon Doug is, okay? So if we're a little bit slow, oh, and I'm forgetting something, I'm forgetting the incense, okay? So candle bearers go that way, Carl goes this way to get the incense. Okay? So as soon as I stand, then Carl will come up, and it's the same thing as the beginning of Mass. So you hand Deacon Doug the boat, slide the ring, slide the chain, and then pinch and hold, and then I stoke the incense, and I bless, slide it, slide the ring, grab the boat, but now you keep the incense, Carl. Deacon Doug doesn't need it yet. Okay? So Carl, you're going to walk from here across to the other side of the altar, okay? And wait over there. Deacon Doug's going to come in front of me and ask for the blessing, and I'll give him his blessing. While this is happening, that's when the candle bearers walk around and think, candle bearers, it's almost, I always like to think of it like there's a string tied between you, okay? You're always walking side by side. You should never break apart, okay? Coming to the front, now we're going to make it, the change, there's going to be a little bit of a change from here, okay? Because now the book is on the back. So when you walk up, you're going to split like you normally do and keep walking around the altar. One on either side to get on either side of Deacon Doug, okay? Then when he holds it up, this candle bearer is going to slide back this way and Deacon Doug's going to slide so that Kalel can come on his right so that you can form a straight line here before you start walking and then walk around this way together in one straight line around and straight to the ambo. Okay, and then the two candle bearers face the book. So you don't face out. You're lighting the gospel, right? You're shedding a light on the story of Jesus' life. Okay? Now when there's incense... Deacon Doug says, the Lord be with you. And then he says, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As soon as he says that, then Carl, you slide in and hand Deacon Doug the incense. Okay, and then take a step back. He's going to incense the book of the Gospels. There we go. And then he'll hand the incense back to Carl. And then Carl, you just kind of hang out there. And then Deacon Doug will proclaim the gospel, finishing with the gospel, of the, Lord. the gospel of the Lord. When he goes to kiss the book, that's when candle bearers, you can make a move. So you go before Deacon Doug, and the thurfer leads the way out that way. Okay, so to get off, you just go straight off back to the alcove. Okay, and the thurfer walks through the sacristy to bring the incense to the other side. And then Deacon Doug and I are going to meet in the middle here and bow, and then I'll go and do the homily. Okay? Once the candles are back, the candle bearers come back here. Then after the homily, then we have the creed, we have the prayers of the faithful, and then everybody else sits after the prayers of the faithful, but altar servers, you're back at work. Okay? So when everybody else sits, then the cross bearer, Haley's going to come first across, okay? And Deacon Doug is going to follow her. And every time you pass the altar, you do a small head bow. You don't have to go big bow, but every time you cross the altar, just kind of a small bow of your head 
as you walk across. It's a way of showing respect to that special place. Okay? Now, for the altar, some of the altar servers might have noticed we're doing things a little bit differently to hopefully make things easier for you. Okay, so the cross bearer is the one who's kind of the leader over here, and he or she will direct the candle bearers on what to bring and when to bring things to Deacon Doug. Okay? Okay, so the first thing that goes is the chalice with the purificator and the paten and the pall and the corporal. And the names of all those things are in your little booklets. So you can look at those and learn what those names are because when I need something, I'm going to use those names. So if I use that name, you have to know what I'm asking for. Okay, so there's that little diagram in your booklets. That little diagram is in the, in the vestry too for you to, to learn the names of the different articles. Okay, so when the altar server brings the chalice with one hand here and another hand on top, they set it on Deacon Doug's left hand side. So that's a change this year, okay? Then Deacon Doug will set out the corporal and then... He'll, he'll leave this up here for now. And then as soon as du Deacon Doug sets the corporal, then the cross bearer is going to bring the missile. Okay, so this is why the, the older kids do this, because this is pretty heavy. But when they hand the missile with the stand, the, the big part of the stand goes towards them, because then Deacon Doug can grab the other part and set it straight on the altar. Okay, then he opens that up. And then what comes next are the other ciborium. So two things, keep going, two things when you're bringing things to the altar. The idea is that you're timing yourself to bring things just when Deacon Doug needs them. So that you're not just standing there going like, okay, take it, take it, take it, take it. Right, you want to stay at the table until Deacon Doug needs it, and then you bring it and hand it to him. The other thing is that nothing goes on the altar except by the deacon or the priest. Okay? So you can set this down because it's hard to hand off. So you set that down for Deacon Doug to set. But the offering to God, the offering of the gifts onto the altar, happens by the hands of the priest. So you take it and bring it over and you hand it to Deacon Doug. So you don't set those things on the altar, you hand them to Deacon Doug and he puts them on the altar. Make sense? And then you slide back. Okay. Now when the altar is set, here's another thing. We did practice it last year. If you remember the altar server practice from last year, but we're actually going to do it now here in a couple weeks, and that is bringing up the gifts, okay? So when we bring up the gifts, that means when the altar is set, I will stand up from my chair, and the two candle bearers are going to walk from where they are, and you're going to walk out this way, okay? And come and meet me down here in front of the altar, one on either side of me. Okay, so then a family or somebody from the parish will bring forward the bread and the wine. Okay, so when I get it, I'll give the bread to one side, I'll give the wine to the other side, and then once you receive the bread and the wine, then you can turn around and go back up to hand those things to Deacon Doug. Make sense? Okay, and then I'm going to go back up so you're going to go around this side, Kalel. So you're going to stay together. So always think candle bearers, you're tied together. You're always staying together. Okay? Then Deacon Doug, the water and the wine. Now when you hand the water and the wine, the easiest thing to do is they have a really small handle. Okay? For you, you hold it in the palm of your hand. Okay, it sits pretty nicely in the palm of your hand with your other hand beside. 
and Deacon Doug and I are both right-handed. So if you put the handle on the right-hand side, that's like Ultra Server Plus, okay? If you forget to do that, it's no big deal. But when you do remember, it's helpful, okay? So you have the handle over on that side because it's easiest for us to grab it. And then when we're handing it back, when we're holding it by the handle, if you just put your palm out, then we can place it on your palm and you can grab it, and then it's easiest to hand off that way, okay? So then once Deacon Doug has poured the water and the wine, then you can slide back and get ready for the next part. And then I will do my priest thing at the altar. Okay. At this point, Kalal, you're going to go grab the incense again. And you're going to walk through the sacristy around to the other side. Actually, no, come this way. Deacon Doug, come on this side. So here's the tricky part, the reason why I sometimes get confused. Most churches have this on this side with the priest chair on this side, which means that your table would normally be on my right and everything comes from the right side. But because the table is on the other side, things are coming from both sides. So sometimes I get confused. So just be patient with me. Okay? So same thing as before. So Deacon Doug, you should be back here. Hand the boat. Lift the ring. Slide the chain, pinch the chain, stoke the incense, bless the incense, slide it down, slide the chain, slide the ring, grab the boat, the chain, okay, and then I come and I incense the gifts, and then we go around and incense the altar. Okay, and then I hand this to Deacon Doug, and Deacon Doug and I bow to, no, Deacon Doug, we bow to each other, and then Deacon Doug will incense me first. Good grammar practice. Okay, and then he goes out, and he'll incense all the people, and while he does that, that's when the two altar servers come with, we call the lavabo, the pitcher and the bowl, and wash the priest's hands. Okay, so when we do it, I'll put my hands over the bowl. Don't be afraid to put a bunch of water. Okay, my hands get really dirty, so I need lots of water. Okay, so just pour. When I'm done with the water, I'll just kind of slide my hands out of the way, and that's how you'll know that I'm finished. And then I'll reach in, and I'll dry my hands on the towel, and then I'll make a small head bow, and you'll bow back. It's just kind of a way of saying thank you without using words at Mass, and then I come back here. Okay? Then, if there isn't incense, as soon as you go back with the wine, you're going to come back basically right away to wash the hands. There's no space in between if there's no incense. Okay? Then, we're going to skip that part. We'll do that part at another time. Then the next part is the ringing of the bells. So when we start to sing the Holy Holy, remember when we sing that part of the Mass, then those three altar servers are going to go down the stairs to the bottom. Carl, you can put the incense back. Okay. Now the cross bearer will be the one to ring the bells. Okay, so as soon as the Holy Holy is done, the cross bearer will ring the bells to let everybody know now is the time to kneel. So how does the bell ringing sound, Haley? So one wrong, long ring means to kneel. Okay, and then we start what we call the consecration. Okay, so I say the prayers at the altar. Then when, I'm, when I lift up the host, that's when we ring the bells differently. So when I lift up the host, what do the bells sound like, Haley? Haley? 
and I set it down, and then I say the words over the chalice, and then I'll lay, r raise the chalice in the same way, and when I do that, the bells ring again. Set it down, and then we all stand together. When we all stand, then the altar servers can come back up top here, okay? It's just easier for you to kneel on the step than on the flat ground when you have the alb on, okay? And then you stay there praying. Now, here's kind of a thing for how to hold your hands during Mass. What I'm going to ask you all to do is you're praying through Mass. So to hold your hands at your chest, palms together, okay? Because if we, if we go like this, it's kind of just like we're, looks like we're standing around waiting for something. But we're praying during Mass. So you'll notice that Deacon Doug and me, that whenever our hands aren't doing something, holding something, we bring our hands back into our prayer posture. So hands together with palms together. You can either have your fingers straight. That's how I do it. Because if I do like this, I tend to play with my knuckles. So that I don't play with my knuckles, I keep my hands straight. Because then I can't play with my fingers. Okay, so you can put your fingers straight or your hands locked together, but your hands are at your chest. So whenever you're not doing something, that's where your hands go back. Okay? And then you're going to just kind of stay there in a prayer posture for a long time as I pray the Eucharistic prayer all the way to the end until communion. Okay? So I first give communion to Deacon Doug and then the extraordinary ministers of communion and then I will hand the ciborium. And, and when Deacon Doug is here, he's going to go across to that side and he gives the altar servers communion first before he goes out to the people. Okay? And then I'll be out front and the other Eucharistic minister will be over on the side. Once the cross bearer decides that you've waited long enough after receiving communion, then you'll be taking everything off of the altar, okay? So this is what's going to be left on the altar. So the cross is going to come, so Haley's going to come and lead the way, okay? So what you'll do first is take the book off first. So the cross will take that themselves because it's big for some of the smaller altar servers and place it back on the table. Okay, And then I would say you can hand the lids for the Saboria. So candle bearers, you're watching for Haley. She's going to hand you things off the altar. Okay, so when she needs to hand, when the cross bearer needs to hand something, to be ready. Okay, then there's the chalice with the purificator that rests across the top. Then the paten that goes on top of that. Then the pall goes on top of the paten. Then you slide the chalice off the corporal. And then you fold the corporal. And there's a special way to fold that. So we'll show that at a different time. And then once you do that, place the corporal on top. And then slide it over. One of the cross bears can come and grab it. So everything's going on the side there. Now, one of the things is the lids don't need to go on that square piece of cloth called the corporal. The lids can go way off to the side. We don't need them anymore. And they just get in the way. Okay, so keep them. The only thing that will go on that corporal is the chalice when you set it down over there. Okay? And then once you're done, then candle bearers, you can be seated at your chair, and then the cross bearer is going to go back to their chair on the other side. Then once we're all done communion and Deacon Doug and I are back over at our chair. And we had a moment of silence. Then I'll stand and say, let us pray. And then it's the same as the beginning.
So the cross bearer will grab the book, come to the deacon, let the ribbon open, and come stand right in front of me, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And close the book, walk off the side, and then as soon as the cross bearer moves off the side, the cross bearer and the thurifer are going to walk around behind the sacristy. The candle bearers are going to go. And this is, while this is happening, this is when I'm giving the blessing. Okay, so you can move already while the blessing is happening so that you're ready to go. And then Deacon Doug finishes by saying, oh, in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Then me and Deacon Doug are going to come and reverence the altar. And we're going to time ourselves. Okay. To come around. So, Kalel, if you want to come a little bit closer to that cross, a little bit tighter to that cross, not so much behind. And then when you come across, just like that, okay? Sometimes this gets really wonky in that turn, okay? So always remember, you're trying to keep a straight line. The cross bearer sets the pace, and candle bearers, you just follow the pace that the cross bearer sets, okay? And Carl, you're going to be in front, so if there's an extra altar server on the way out, you've got to do the opposite, right? Because you're going to turn around in a second. So you don't want to be behind the cross, you want to be here, because once Deacon Doug and I genuflect... And always turn to your right, so we're all turning the same way. And now we're ready to process out like that. And then you just walk out straight back to the vestry and blow out the candles. <laughs>